Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'm going to cut and polish this little stone here. So you'll notice, unlike many of the pieces that I cut on the channel, this has already been started, and what we call this is an opal rub. So the crust is already removed off the top. You can see there's a little bit of a sand spot. It's not shaped exactly what I would want in the end, and it's a nice little crystal with a gray base just from the uh, backing. So. It's not a doublet or anything, it's just natural, naturally like this, a little layer of crystal opal on top of a bit of grey potch. So it gives it a nice little pop in colour, basically, well I've heard people call it a natural doublet, but it really isn't anything like a doublet. We're going to go through rubs, because a lot of people have asked me how you can guarantee that a parcel of rough is going to cut something. And honestly, the only 100% method is to just stick to buying opal rubs. What you see is what you get. You don't lose a lot of carat weight, so you don't have to factor that in. This itself is just under 0.6 of a carat, and I'm hoping to keep it over half a carat. And all we're going to do, you can see here, there's a little edge over that, that side that's a little bit pointy, so that'll get cut back. And in the right angle, you can see just here, there's a little sand spot, which we're going to try to carve off or maybe just round off, because it's near the surface. And we're going to see how that goes. You'll also notice that the stone is fairly directional, looks good in some angles, doesn't look so great in others. So when you've got that, make sure that you first decide the angle, or the face that looks the best. The angle that makes the face look the best, is the best way to put it. So something like that, it looks real nice. I'm keeping it underwater because it is still fairly rough on the surface, so if it dries up it just clouds over and you don't see the pattern. But something like this looks nice, so from this angle, I'm going to have to make sure I shape it right and shape the back right, so it means taking a little bit off the top here. And then when it sits flat, it should sit at that angle. And yeah, that's basically it. You also don't need any sintered burrs, so I'm going to skip the sintered burrs today and I'm going to go straight to Nova Points. I might, oh, having said that, I'll just clip this little edge here and just do a little bit of shaping on both this side and that sand spot with the 600 sintered diamond because it, it doesn't do it any harm, and it'll just be a lot faster. So I'll nip those off, and then basically we'll just go through the Nova polishing stages and some serum oxide. And it really shouldn't take too long at all. So let's dive in. Alright, here we go. Diving in. This camera seems to struggle a bit with blues. It kind of blows them out a little bit too much. But we'll get a new phone sometime soon, and that'll fix it, so... We're focusing on that edge, just clipping off that high part. And over here, there's a little bit of a high part, but also a little clump of sand right there on the edge. And when you've got crystal opal like this, you can't have any sand. If it's even in the back and there's no potch layer between that and the crystal, you're going to see it. It's And it stands out huge. It's like a magnifying glass. Maybe that's just me, but I noticed the slightest imperfection in a crystal opal and it drives me insane. So here we go, we're just shaping it down a bit. Unfortunately, even though it's quite round now, I do have to cut back quite a bit because you can see there that sand just didn't quite disappear as quickly as I would have liked. So then you have to even it up on the other side. So you have to take off the other side a little bit. So even though the rubs give you a much greater idea than a piece of rough, you still can be surprised slightly, especially with sand or potch lines. Potch lines can still appear out of nowhere. And then here we are, we've finished shaping, so no more sintered diamond. I could have done the shaping with a black nova as well, but I thought it'd be a bit quicker and I like to preserve my black novas. Sintered diamond burrs will put up with anything, the novas, they do wear out much quicker. So when you can, use the sinteds. And then yeah, black, we're just tidying up, still shaping, so it's still definitely shaping out of black. It will take away material quite quickly. So, shaping and we're starting the dome. You don't want to start the dome with the sintered diamond. One, because the scratches in the surface will be a little bit too deep and will take a bit of work to get rid of. There was a floating bug in the water, good. And two, it it's just the chance of any kind of chipping is just too much and it's really hard to reverse that. So, then we're switching over to the brown nova. So this is 600 grit, and we're still shaping. So a lot of people struggle with the brown nova because you you kind of, when you haven't gotten used to them, 
you kind of assume that the brown is not really doing much. It doesn't feel like it's doing much and it doesn't look like it's doing much. But once you work with Boulder Opal, you'll notice how much the brown is actually taking off and it's a surprising amount. So it can sneak up on you and surprise you a bit. So just be a little bit careful. And now you see, because I've made this stone smaller, I'm really struggling here to hold this stone in place. And it's starting to fly around all over the place. My fingers are also getting quite wrinkly. But you see here that this, I'm persisting with it, but really, a smarter person than me would have already dopped this, and in a second you'll see what I do with it. So, flicks off, and I've basically had enough at that point. And look at that. Just straight away dopped it, back to the brown Nova. And this way you can get a much easier, much easier finish. So, holding it's a lot easier, but also shaping it and polishing it is much easier when it's dopped. So once it does get small, or even just generally, just dop. If, if in doubt, just dop it. Unless you're working on a double-sided stone, you really should just dop everything anyway. So it makes everything much easier. And it's far less stress. Far less stress. You don't have to worry about flicking out anywhere or finding it anywhere, hitting the floor and cracking. None of that stuff. And then here, we've basically shaped it now at this point, and we're just hitting it with the 1200 grit Nova, per, Nova point. And yeah, you can see here, the manipulation and the field of view when you've got it dopped is just huge. And this dop is a chopstick, so nothing fancy, just a chopstick that you get with your sushi if you get that for lunch. And super glue. So just a quick super glue because I didn't want to stop filming and wait for five minute epoxy to dry. And I haven't used wax in quite a long time. So we're now over to the 3000 grit and I clearly haven't cleaned the screen all that well because there is a bit of a fog. So that's diminishing a little bit of the shine but you can see here it's starting to get, it's starting to come through. So starting to get a little bit shiny, but because the stone's been progressing so well, we will go to the polishing powder, which is the black lighters, black lighters polishing powder. So a really thin solution, this one. I just have a little bit of it in a lot of water. So it's not even like milk. It's much thinner than milk. Unlike my old serums where I've had to use quite a, quite a thick paste, actually. You almost use it like a diamond paste, except even thicker. And that was the only way I could get a really nice mirror finish. This stuff works beautifully well with a tiny amount. Well, even though in my day job I've worked 36 hours in the last three days and it's absolutely killing me. Thank God we, that won't last forever. I've managed to finish this one. The video is definitely going to be late because it's already late. Um, so sorry about that, but we are going to get there because the stone is finished. Now you can see here, this is the angle that I design the cut for. If I had des decided to cut it as it was, that would have been the face like that. So every now and then you do want to check the directionality of a stone and if it is directional, just make sure that you cut so that the face is going to show the best when it's flat on its back. Because cutting it like this would be a huge disappointment but also if I went the other way that would also be a huge disappointment. So try to get the best out of it. I know if you're going to set it in jewellery or something, it's going to move around a bit. This will be designed for a ring when I get to when I get the skills for silversmithing. This will be a tiny little ring stone. But yeah, if it was on a pendant or something, the directionality doesn't matter so much because the item is going to move around so much more and there will be times when you see it like this. Or see it like this when you really want it like this. Unless you glue it to your chest, it's not going to it's not really going to be like that. So yeah, it's something to consider when you're cutting your stones. And this one in general, as far as rubs went, this one I actually lost a bit more. That sand that was in the corner, it actually made me cut it quite a bit to get it into a, a decent shape and also remove all the sand. So this has actually gone from, what, it was just under 0.6 and now it's just under 0.4. So a little bit smaller than I would have liked. I was hoping to keep it around the 0.5 mark. But, you know, every now and then a little sand spot makes you take away a bit more. And the top wasn't so even, so I had to take a bit off there just to make it a nice even dome across the face of it. But, that's it. 
It was a uh, slightly smaller stone than I wanted to work, but at least it's done now and it looks all right. It's a little bit directional, but we can't win them all. So this I think is still a draw when it comes to rubs. It looks basically exactly like I thought it would at the end. That's the benefit of rubs. You know what you're gonna get at the end. Whereas with rough, you might've ended up with nothing. You might've ended up with something even better, but you really just don't know all that well. Overall, I'm happy and it's time to have a bit of a rest and get working on the next video. So catch you guys in the next one. <laughs>